Hey, I'm Dave Grimm. And uh, today I will walk you through my step-by-step -step process for creating what I call self-defense hair sticks. These are solid steel hair sticks. They function both as hair sticks, put your hair up in a bun, hold it in place. Um, <clears throat> they can also be used for blunt force stabbing in, you know, various soft, squishy spots. Um, they can also be used like a, a kubaton, for example. Uh, if you remember hold handheld weapons where you can use them on pressure points and affecting wrist locks. Um, anything that increases the leverage during the takedown. More on that in a future video. For today, you are invited to learn about my process for creating these beautiful and functional forged hair sticks. They come in three finishes, satin stainless, polished stainless, and a black and mild steel. The blackening process is done with a hot linseed oil and it creates a beautiful protective finish that will last for many years and it's actually baked into the steel. Most of today's video was shot while I was processing a batch of stainless. So here we go. Hey there, I'm Dave Grimm. And after 30 years in the corporate world, I'm going back to my roots as a gunsmith and as a maker and diving back into the world of creating things. With the support of my amazing wife, I put together a new shop and I'm starting to offer products and services. This channel is a tribute to everyone who has side hustles as they turn them into a primary hustle over the next few years. If you find value in this type of video, I hope you'll like and subscribe for more future content as I launch the gunsmith shop and continue forging and as I dive into knife making and whatever other creative work I can dream up. Step one, cut to length. In this video, I was cutting them at six inches, which creates a very lightweight stick. However, towards the end of the cutting, I had a piece that was five and a half, and I do have to say, I was very pleased with its final weight, and I'll be cutting them shorter and drawing them out with a more aggressive taper in the future. Step two, draw the sticks out to at least seven inches. And since the sticks are so thin, they don't stay at temperature very long. So I started my taper around two inches from the end, and after four or five heats, I hit the proper length. Usually I work my way down the stick for each progressive heat, and I focus on keeping a fairly consistent thickness throughout the taper. The final step of the process is to use a lightweight hammer and smooth out as many of the hammer marks as possible and to provide a semi-straight stick for the next process. Sometimes I straighten them in the vise, but this particular time I just hammered them until they were close. Here you can see a couple sticks after they were drawn out and hammer straightened. The twist is the next step. It's the most fun part. It's attractive and it's functional because it helps the stick stay in place, whether you have thin hair or very thick hair. There's a number of ways to do this, but I found that the oxyacetylene torch was the easiest. And it took about 10 tries um, on various pieces of metal until I found a twist that worked every time. I usually use the color you see in the video, but once in a while, like you see in the video, it got stuck. It sticks. And... Uh, It'll, it'll either be a bend or something in the, in the steel that'll swell up and prevent it from going there. So whether I use the cover or not, it allows me to be very precise with the heat each time. So I create a, a very consistent twist. Also, I like to reverse the twist from one stick to the other. I personally think this is a more attractive method. Mm -hmm. Before I can finish and shape the sticks, they have to be mostly straight and fairly concentric. They don't have to be perfect, but in order to process 10 sticks at a time in a reasonable time, I make them work in the drill. The last image you see here is a few of the stainless sticks after twisting and straightening. And one of the fun parts is no two are quite completely the same, but they all look rustic and they're all fairly consistent. Next step is to shape with a final taper. I do this on a used 36 grit belt. The trick here is to remove the sharp edges other more elaborate sticks that are out there have designs on the end and uh, we found that one of the reasons people like this particular style is there's no chance
for it to snag or to pull on hair. So after the taper, each stick is de-edged on the same belt prior to the final smoothing. The final smoothing is a more visual process. You can see I use the magnifier here. I switch to a finishing belt, I take out the grinder marks, and I run my finger over the edges to ensure nothing anywhere is sharp or able to catch hair. I also use the magnifier to get in close and see all the forging marks and hammer marks to make sure that they're smooth and that they'll take a final finish. This is the step that makes it possible to have an attractive finish of any kind. Onto that, after that, it's onto the wire wheel. You can see here I'm using the wire wheel to put a satin finish on the stainless. Mm -hmm. If I'm making a polished stainless, I'll go to a Scotch Bright or a buffing compound. And then the last step is blackening the mild steel. The goal is for the linseed to bake into the metal. This is where I'll go back to the forge. I turn one burner off and I use the indirect heat to bring the stick up to temperature for a linseed dunk. The trick here is to get a good even coat a nice boil each time and sometimes it takes multiple heats a little steel wool but once it's baked in it creates a very shiny polymer effect that will protect the stick for many years I have to apologize my video work here isn't the greatest but uh, you can see uh, the, the, the shiny part shows up real well the polished stainless shows up real well and I'd like to take a minute and just give a couple of quick shout outs to the people who made this possible the first one is Jerry Groupie of Wild Earth Creations. Visit Jerry at her booth at many of the outdoor markets, Renaissance festivals, Vikings festivals all around Arizona and Texas. The second is Greg Howderloot of Rugged Gale. Visit Greg at many of the same festivals and especially at the Highland Games, uh, any place where you can find a lot of guys with beards. Uh, his beard oil is pretty much the best on the market. I've been using it for years. Thanks for visiting today. Uh, check us out online, and we'll see you next time around.